Come on, you're all I need. Come on, let's just look to the Lord and say, you're all I need. Come on, look to the Lord and say, you're all I need. Come on, let's worship together.
worship the Lord with us. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, how we love you, how we adore you, Father. Father, you are just an awesome God. You are so, you're all that we need, Father. Father, we ask right now that you have your way in this sanctuary, Father. Father, you blow a fresh anointing upon us. When the preach word has gone forth, Lord, I pray, we pray and ask that someone come saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, and shalom. Good morning. Our scripture reading for today can be found in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Again, that's Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. When you have it, please say praise the Lord. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But you can, but who can endure this, the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purify of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. And then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former years. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God, and I do believe that is true. The, gas, the glass withers and the flowers fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Shalom, and would you remain standing as we sing our morning hymn, Jesus, the light of the world.
refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Amen. With that, we ask that while we consider all of our prayer concerns, that you pray God's peace for our bereaved families. We're praying with Lisa Askew in the passing of her uncle, Calvin Hurd of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're also praying with Mary Manning in the passing of her brother, Chalmers Glasper. We're praying with Minister Yolanda Jones and the Parker family in the passing of my cousin, Cortez Parker. As always, we're praying with Pastor and Sister Cheryl Clark and family and the entire Shalom family. Now I invite you to pick up a completed copy of the prayer concern out in the rotunda because we all need to pray for our brothers and sisters, amen. And lastly, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, it is our prayer that after the proclamation of the gospel that you invite Jesus into your life. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 and 9 that if you just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. It's just as simple as that. Or perhaps you may have already accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, but you don't have a church home. You've been seeking a place where you can be nurtured in the faith. I encourage you to join our fellowship where you can be nurtured under the leadership of our pastor, the Reverend Freddie, Dr. Freddie James Clark. Amen. Now, our contact information is on the bottom of the screen, or even if you're in the sanctuary, we admonish you to come down this aisle saying, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? Now, our choir is going to lift our hearts before we go to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. No! Oh. 
other hand. Let us bow our heads and go to God in prayer. Our Lord and our God, how we love and adore you. We thank you for being a merciful and a good God. We thank you for being a God who hears and answers our prayers. So Lord, we render everything unto you right now, all in this room and all of those families that are at home. Whatever they stand in need of, your loving kindness, your tender compassion, you are merciful, Lord God, that you will come down, hear, answer, deliver, and sustain. And for that, we give you thanks. We thank you for the anointing that is present right now in the sanctuary. We pray right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that the word will go forth, that you will strengthen our pastor, that someone's heart will be nurtured and they will say, I yield, I yield. Lord God, we thank you for the bereaved right now. We know you to be a God who will comfort, strengthen, guide, protect, give them peace, and also a remembrance of Lord, of their family member. Thank you for being so merciful. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for the privilege of worship. It is in the powerful, penetrating name of Jesus the Christ. I pray and give thanks. Amen.
praise the Lord, grateful uh, for this day. This is the day that the Lord had made. We rejoice uh, because we are glad in it, inspired by the uh, music on today and for the uh, community prayer and certainly for your presence. God is good. Yeah, God is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is good. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, no, no sense in us trying to be wise otherwise. God is good. God is good. God is good. And we're grateful. Grateful to got a chance to hear our younger people today. Yeah, good to see you. And uh, I don't know how much of a challenge it is for you to be here this early, but trust me, the Lord going to bless you. He's going he to bless you. The older you get, the more you're going to see that the early bird gets the worm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Isaiah 64, the Verse 8, verses, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire set twigs ablaze and caused water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who act on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. And then can we be saved? How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean. And all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf. And like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. And we are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You may be seated. Solicit your prayers <laughs> on today that the exiled have returned home to Jerusalem, but what they find is a pathetic situation. The city is in ruins. The temple has been burned to the ground. There is moral decay and political confusion. The people call on God in what appears to be this place of God's silence. They confess their sins and they place themselves in the hand of God. And they patiently wait for God to enter into their circumstances. 
they're at a place where they want to hear from God. They want to hear from the Lord. They, they request through imperatives a replication of old theophanies. They want Yahweh to be catechismically present. They want him to be present in overwhelming ways such as he was in the past. They want the Lord to do it again. And that's what I want to talk about. Lord, Lord do it again. Oh, open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. And when fire kindles brushwood, uh, they are, uh, or they have done a documentary on the Beatles, uh, Get Back. I look forward to laying eyes on that. That Get Back was one of the Beatles' major hits, spontaneously driven. Um, you know, there, there are some things that we start off doing that it doesn't look like much at the time. Um, and it turns out to be something that is a blessing to people. Uh, but the Beatles uh, also sang, uh, they sang several songs, but, but one of their songs were uh, titled Yesterday, uh, released in 1965. Some of you all remembered, some of you all know it, well, some of you still sing it. I, I won't go through the whole song because it's not uh, uh, paramount to what, I, what I'm attempting to say on the day, but uh, some of those words say, yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe. In yesterday, if if Israel, uh, for their homecoming, had had this Beatles song, they they would have inserted it in in the reading, uh, because because their belief at this particular time is in yesterday. Uh, that 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 the lament is a hope to return to yesterday, a return when God was active and when God was making God's self known yesterday. Yeah. For 16 years, Memorial Entertainment Television, MTV, has been providing its viewers with the best of timeless programming. Uh, some of us in here watch MeTV. Uh, uh, and uh, we know all of the uh, shows that come on MeTV because they're repeats. They are reruns. Uh, you, you, and, and, and we have a tendency to watch, if not all day, then certain segments of the day when, when stuff like Bonanza and, and Big Valley uh, and The Rifleman. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if you happen to be up uh, late, you got uh, Mannix and Cannon, uh, Barney B. Jones, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 
because these shows give, it, give us a bit of nostalgia. Uh, they are profoundly melancholic and, and, and plants in our spirit, uh, at least temporarily, a, a want for yesterday. That, that, that Israel is looking for the spiritual rendition of a forceful, liturgical demonstration of God's decisive power. Uh, they, 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 are, they are looking for God to demonstrate again his greatest hits. They, 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 are, they, are, they, they are saying, in, in essence, in another kind of way, uh, Lord, we need for you to do it again. Do, do something like the Red Sea, where your children were in trouble. Uh, that uh, mountains on one side, valleys on the other, enemies behind, Red Sea in front. We need for you to part the Red Sea that your children can, can cross. Uh, we, 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 we need for you to Demonstrate again how you're able to keep a people together for 40 years in the wilderness without a, without a Deerbergs or a Snooks. We need, we need, yeah, we, we need for you, we need for you to uh, not just look down from your lofty throne as mentioned in Isaiah 63, 15. Yeah, we, we need for you now to come into our situation. Hallelujah. In, in verse 4b, no eyes have seen a God like you who work for those who wait for him. Mm. that there is a need for God to do something, then we are hit with verse 4b. No eyes have seen a God like you who work for those who wait for him. That they are asking God to do something for them that will require some waiting. That God moves for those who learn how to wait. I wish this was pretty preaching. I'm doing, I'm doing the best I can with, with uh, the Holy Spirit leading me, even now, to say that, that there is an art to waiting. And, and all of us at some point have had to learn the, the art of waiting. And here is the art. I'm glad you asked me how that's done. Here, here is the art of waiting. Wait. When, the, when, 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 when we are in a holding pattern, there is nothing that we can do but wait it out. When we try to take matters into our own hands, all of us can testify we make a mess of all we had to do was to wait. Hallelujah. And, and waiting is one of the most difficult things that people of faith has ever had to do because we are part of the instant uh, gratification generation that we, we want what we want and we want it right now. And so there is nothing to be gained, so we think 
when we find ourselves in a place where we have to wait. Psalms 27, 13, and 14. I remain confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And it goes on to say, wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart, and then wait for the Lord. That there's some things that you and I want from the Lord, as Israel did, that we got to we got to wait for it. Yeah, that uh, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. He understandeth the unsearchables. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increased strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to learn how to wait. You got to patiently wait. Hallelujah. Yeah, and, and it is the enemy's desire and design that we give up on God. We give up on God uh, without understanding that God doesn't operate in time. He's on time, but he doesn't operate in time. There, there is no due date for God. Yeah, there, there, there is no month of December for God. Yeah, there is no AM or PM for God. Hallelujah. He, he's just aware of every situation without having to pull out a reminder. He's God, and he's God all by himself. Sometimes I wonder if we really know uh, who God is. Yeah, that, that, that God is an awesome God. I, I struggled to try to define him. God is a merciful God. Yeah, God, God is the only God, the only supreme being that understands our situation and circumstances as we are just a speck on the planet and can take care of us and everything else that's under his jurisdiction as God. God is an awesome God. And, 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 and he's worthy to be praised. I don't take that lightly, I don't say that lightly. God is worthy to be praised. And sometimes we don't feel like it because a piece of our faith operates on feelings. And, and, it, and, it, and even worship sometimes becomes an uphill battle because some sit in and, and interrupt the atmosphere of what God is attempting to do because they are operating in their feelings. Yeah, and I want to add to that. Excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. I'm getting excited. That I am uh, so glad on this morning that God does not operate in his feelings as it relates to you and I. That God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not a sometime a God. Yeah, he loves us in spite of us. And so I wonder if you're not too mean and if you can't move out of your feelings this morning and uh, think only of his goodness. I wonder if you can't praise him where you are. This ain't about your neighbor, this about you. If you can't throw back your head and, and position your hands Hallelujah, and start to thank God. He's a good God. 
I said he's a good God. Worthy. And the more we praise him, the more we going we gonna to discover that when we wait on God, we find out that he's worth waiting on. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's worth... Yeah, because we discover that all things have been working together for our good and for God's glory. It may not feel all right while you're going through it, but there, there's a point that God is trying to make in both you and I in our waiting, and that is to discover you can't do nothing but wait on God for some things. And while you're waiting, you praise him through it. And when you get where you go and you give him the glory for your deliverance. Now our deliverance may not look like we want it to look. Yeah, but God knows what's best for us. And that's, that's hallelujah good news on the day. Hallelujah. There's something else here. Uh, something else in this. This text is loaded. Uh, so, so, so if there is uh, to be godly action from heaven, there must be earthly human confession. As I borrow from First John that says that if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just and will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Uh, the God silence in the text, uh, brothers and sisters, has something to do with human pollution. Uh, has something to do with human sin. Too often sin is deemed a slight mistake or a minor infraction that not Really, when we look at it, it called for our uh, having to confess. And rather than confess, we find ourselves uh, excusing it. Uh, but when we trying to hear from God, you can't excuse sin. You got to confess it. Got to confess it. That's hard for uh urban, middle-class black folk to understand because all of us have a tendency to think that we are uh, first in line when it comes to God. And this sin issue has everything to do with our neighbor and not with us. And, and, and so it moves me to, to then try to impress upon the people of God that, that the move of God in as much as we claim in our culture personal salvation, his move's always communal. That, that, we, that, that we, we may have a personal relationship with God, but our personal relationship with God is not to be lived in isolation. That we are part of the community. Let me see if I can show you this in the text. Uh, verse 5b to verse 7. It, it, it mentions us and we. Uh, these first person plural pronouns. They, they really point to our uh, interconnectedness to the human family. Uh, that these verses move us from thinking about uh, a personal, solo, godly victory such as what we find in the rich, rich young ruler uh, who, who, who says, I, I've kept all of this from my youth up. Now what's in it for me? Uh, but not just him or either the stay-at-home brother in the prodigal story. And, and we are either the stay-at-home brother and sister that never done nothing, or we've kept it all from our youth up. Uh, but, but then we discover when we read the text that all of us are part of the human problem. Yeah, 
all of us, even when we have done anything, you're still in the burning house. And all of us collectively uh, are part of the human predicament, as noted in the text. But you have been very angry, listen, with us. For uh, we are not godly, we are constant sinners. And so in these verses we have uh, with us, or us, noted ten times. Verse 6, okay. we are all afflicted and impure. Not some of us. Yeah. When we display our righteous deeds, they are but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we, we wither and fall and are swept away. Mm-mm. You, you, you swept us away like the wind. You ought to take some time and read this when you get home. Verses 5 to 7, how, how the I can't get away from the we. And, 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 and therefore you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sin. Mm. You know, that, that, that does something to the spiritual eagle who has a tendency to think that they are better. Let's not be naive. There are persons who think that they are spiritually superior uh, to others who just find it hard to get, in the, get a handle on uh, trying to swim out of water. That if you put a fish in water, that's the natural habitat of that fish. You take that fish out of water, uh, all bets are off. And so we were born and shaped in sin and iniquity. That's our natural habitat. Yeah, we, we, don't, we, we, we need not go to school to learn how to sin. It's in us. It was born in us. And over the years, it has developed, it has, it has come into fruition all by itself. And so P Apostle Paul tries to talk against how to move to bring your flesh under submission. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is all of our problem. Now we all don't have the same problem, but we all got a problem. Yeah, it, uh, and I rush to say that when somebody else is going through something, don't get in line with those who criticize. Yeah, that once you live long enough, you learn how to pray and keep your mouth shut. At least your problem starts to serve because the devil is no respect of person. Hallelujah. He desires to sift us as wheat. Uh, and so they're, they're, they're not a party here for the perfect but a human uh, collective cry because of the pain. And so we're in, we in worship and we, we uh, enjoy in worship and sometimes we get a little uh, indifferent with people who in our mind is going overboard. And we start to say stuff to ourselves first. You know, like, uh, it, don't, it, don't, it don't take all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what we say. And then, and then we find the courage to, to, to say to our neighbor, you know, that, that you know, that, that they done, they done gone too, they done gone too far with that. They, you know, I, I'm all for praising God. But, 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 but that's, that's, that's too, 
that's too much. Yeah. And so when we find ourselves in that place, we, we, we ought we to we ought to pause and ask ourselves some serious questions like, you know, I, I wonder, I wonder what their deliverance has been about. I, I wonder what has been the real struggle in their life and how God has met them at that point of need that moves them to this place where they can no longer control their emotions, but they are so grateful for what God has done in delivering them until they start to dance like David danced. Yeah, and almost look like you making a fool out of yourself. But for your neighbor, they don't know like you know how good God has been. Therefore, you have a personal praise party and they invited to it if they dare to join in with you. Now listen, if I'm talking to anybody in this house on this morning and you know it ain't been nobody but Jesus, you ought to have, take about 15 seconds. No, take as long as you want and just tell God thank you because if it had not been for you, I wouldn't have this opportunity to praise you. Hallelujah. 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 silence of God has brought this community to the place where they understand I can't make it without God. <laughs> his, his, his delay Ooh, thank you Jesus. His, his delay teaches us some lessons. You know we be moving around on what my grandmama called a your high horse. I, I didn't never know what none of those uh, old folk sayings were, you know, are you on your high horse? Yeah. You know, and then, and then, and then, and then sometimes, I hope this is not offensive, but, but they would say something like, you smelling yourself. You all remember, don't they? You, you, you smelling yourself. You smelling yourself. Yeah. And, and, and then out of their wisdom, they would, they would say, oh, leave them alone. That's all right. That's all right. Leave them alone. They're going to be all right. Because they've lived long enough to understand that life is going to show up. And, and, and when it shows up, it always gives us a different disposition. Hallelujah. And, and, and the silence of God brought this community to understand that I'm nothing without God. for persons who, who have this tendency to think that you can rival God because you graduated from the university or your job is paying you good money and then you move to this place where you don't need God anymore, that your bank account is sufficient and you got your health and strength and you think you're on top of the world. I want you to know that's temporary. That's very temporary because it doesn't take much for your situation to turn around. It doesn't take much for you to get a call that required all of your money be invested in your issue. And for that person that's trying to keep God away, you don't need this God. I show up because I'm networking with other people. 
But in, as far as getting into all of that, I don't need, I don't need that. And there's a day with your name on it. Well, all the networking that you have ever done ain't going to be able to deliver you. No, you're going to need God Almighty, the one who sits high and looks low and who understands everything. You're going to need him to come and see about you. Israel did. And I'm talking to somebody in here today. You had to call him. You, you had to call him. Yeah, when your Facebook friends gave out on you, you had to call him. When those who are in your immediate context uh, were AWOL, you had to call him. And when you called him, he heard you. And he came to see about you. Hallelujah. That's our story. That we have a God who is not deaf. That, that when we find ourselves with our back against the wall and nobody else to turn to, we've got a Savior that we can call on. Am I talking to anybody in here? My time is almost up. Had you had to call him? And when you called him, didn't he answer you? Didn't he come and see about you? Didn't he put you in a position where the only other response you could give was thank you, Lord? I say this last thing and I'm, I'm going to find my seat. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so don't, 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 don't miss this. Uh, that uh, in, in verse 7, no one calls on your name or strives to lay hold to you. For you've hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Then this in verse the next verse. The next verse. Two words. Two, two, two words. Yeah. Yet you. Yet, yet. <laughs> yet. Yet you. Uh, Lord of our Father. D don't miss this. And we, and we are, we are hopeless in your hand. Yeah, the, 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 uh, yet you, or in other translations it reads, and yet, and yet after all of this litany of what we are not, which was true. Uh, then we move to this place, <laughs> and yet, Lord, you are our Father. Yeah, and 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 as nothing as we are, <laughs> we are in your hands. Yeah, that that we are dependent on you. That we are your children. Yeah, that at all that we. Yet, Lord, we belong to you. Yeah. And, and so the, the nobody called out to me in verse 7 is answered in verse 8. Yet, Lord, because that's a, that's a cry out of the pitifulness of his people. That, Lord, you made this determination about our makeup, and you are not wrong. But yet, we your children. It's like that parent whose child continues to get in trouble, can, get, continues to get in trouble, continues to get in trouble, and everybody around uh, that parent is talking about how no good that child, that ain't no good, and all that they would do. And so finally that parent speaks up, said he may not be no good, but he's still my child. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that we are children of God. Sometimes you got to be careful because the enemy will try to beat you down. Yeah, and hold over your growth everything that you are not. 
And, and if we start to walk in everything that we are not, God will never be able to elevate us. Yeah, you got to embrace what you are not and start to live toward a new determination because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Let me get on out your way. I got one more thing and I'm, and I'm done. I'm done. I could, I could be up here a long time. Uh, uh, and and, and, it, and it, goes, it, it goes on that, that, that we, are, we are clay and, and you are you're the potter. Yeah, you're the potter. And we're the clay. Yeah. Clay comes from the soil. Yeah. We, we are created from the soil. And in, in the potter, potter's hand, yeah, we've been crafted. We've been crafted. He, he made us. And, and, he, and, and he knows all about us. That's good news today. For somebody that's been leery about whether or not God knows, he knows everything. Yeah, and, and, and when you're feeling wounded and weary, and without, you got to learn how to just say to yourself, he knows all about it. Even if you can't pray for yourself and others refuse to do it, he understands the meditations of your heart. I love him today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And clay in his hands is always a work in progress. Oh, I wish I could preach this like a filler. Yeah, some of y'all looking at me kind of strange this morning. But that's quite all right. Yeah, we all are still clay in the potter's hands. Yeah, make us and mold us after you will. Have your own way. Have that own way. Not on the potter, I'm the clay. Mold me and make me after thine will. While I'm waiting, yield it and steal. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, master today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Yeah, I started off 25 minutes ago with the text opening saying, uh, in essence, do it again. Yeah. Or that you would rent the heavens and come down. That the mountains would tremble before you. Yeah, yeah. Do, do, the, do it again. And, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 think, uh, I think all of us have been around God long enough to know that he's not going to have a repeat performance. That, that whatever he does he doesn't have to do it like he did it he gonna, he gonna do it but it won't be what you already witnessed the thing that makes God God is that he doesn't run out yeah and when you start to think about that all of our needs in this house and those that are looking in are different we don't have the same need, but he's enough God to meet us at our point of need and still have surplus. Who, who wouldn't serve a God like that? And so when you start to look at uh, clay in the potter's hand and the cry of Isaiah 64 and the thought, Lord, do it again, you, you caught off God. When in this Advent season, you see him do it. That that which he holds in his hand, he became. That the clay that he's molding, he became himself. We, we, didn't, we didn't see that coming. 
but it's a statement about how much he loves us that he would become one of us. Yeah, wrap himself up in clay. And he came to see about us. All of our pain and all of our trouble, all of our sorrow, what it means to be broken and bruised and battered, all of those places where we have felt like giving up, he came. And he entered into our situation and circumstances and we got a chance to witness him not just coming in clay, but that clay being marched to Golgotha and hanging on the tree, nails in his hands, yeah, pierced him in his side, and he went on and died, didn't he die? Yeah, he died, didn't he die? And they put him in a borrowed tomb. But early, I wasn't going there. I, yeah, yeah. Early, that, that's my hope on today. That early on the third day morning, God got him up. Yeah, you hadn't seen that before either. But God keeps doing it. He keeps doing it again. I leave you now. May the Lord bless you. And may God keep you. But listen, whisper to your neighbor quickly that the Lord, he keeps doing it for me over and over. Or I can't pay him back, but I can show praise his name because he keeps blessing my family. He keeps a roof over my head. Yeah, I'm in my right mind. I've got my health and strength. Lord, thank you. Continuing to do it over and over and over and over again. Hallelujah. Why heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Hear our prayer. Incline thy ear to us. And we can experience you in this season like we haven't before. Give, give us give us joy. peace and love and then teach us how to walk with you with every step being one of gratitude we love you so much in Jesus name we pray Amen. Can we praise him? Can we? Can we? It is mine to extend this invitation to Christian discipleship. If you're present today, you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior. Our prayer today is that you say yes to him. That you that you make him the head of your life. I don't care what's going on. All of us need Jesus Christ. All of us. If you've never accepted him as Lord and Savior, we pray that now you say yes. If you've never been baptized, we pray that you would say yes to him. Maybe you said, but I've been baptized. I need church home. I need a church home. <laughs> if we're talking to you, won't you, won't you make your way? The choir has prepared something. We'll hear from them as we wait on you. I've been praying for you all week.
bless you. May God keep you. We'll continue to extend an invitation to Christian discipleship to you, my brothers and my sisters on the day yeah, that he became what he himself was molding. You, 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 there, there's just no, there's just no way. As we are on our way to another city, who, whose builder maker is God, but there's just no way that we cannot see the greatness of God while we're on our way. Man, I wish you all hear me. I wish you, I wish you, yeah, that the enemy, the enemy gets us trapped in places where it's not possible to see. And so we got to guard what we believe. Yeah, and pray for each other. Hallelujah. Ooh, wait. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? You understand that? I, I'm, I'm maybe not saying it like I, yeah, but, but I just know that there is so much more to our walk with God than what we are demonstrating. Yeah, that there are people who there are people who, who need deliverance. And, and, they, and they look for a clue of what that looks like through you and I. But we're so bogged down and burdened with our own cares until the message that we send for those who would be delivered that the God we serve is not able. And somebody ought to join in with me and just saying he is able. He is able. He is able. He is able. The devil is a liar. The devil is a, he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. Yeah, and our God is able. Yeah, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Uh, our ushers are coming. It's time for us to give. We, in, in fact, we, we, we need to we need to even move past that being a problem. Because our God is able to take care of us. Yeah. That whatever we find it difficult to part with in our giving is really a testament of our faith in God. But I'm here to tell you that you'll never be able to even pay for not out of all of your resources what God has done and what he continues to do hallelujah yeah I'm asking God now to start blessing my grandchildren's children uh, uh, they don't even have they ain't even think about that yet I hope but I'm asking God, because he that big, he is that big. He that big, I'm telling you. He that big, and I dare you to trust him. I dare you to trust him. Ooh. Ah. Come on, come on, our ushers are coming, come on. Yeah, our ushers are coming. Yeah.
tis the season of shalom. It's finally December. People are making lists, buying special gifts. Everywhere there is an air of Christmas joy. But before you spend time with your family and friends, make sure you protect yourself and your loved ones by getting vaccinated. On December 12th, we will be offering first, second, and third doses of the COVID vaccine. Many families struggle with making ends meet throughout the year. And unfortunately, the pandemic has exacerbated this problem. That is why this year we will partner with Unleashing Potential to host a toy drive. We will be collecting new and unwrapped toys from now until December 19th at the Lindbergh location. For more information about the toy drive or Unleashing Potential, please visit our website at www.shalomccop.org. Let's help make this Christmas a very special Christmas for the children of our community. Christmas worship will be held on Saturday, December 25th at 10 a.m. We will be having one service on Sunday, December 26th at 10 a.m. Both services you can attend in person or via live stream. Join us every Wednesday for Wisdom Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via live stream. You may attend Sunday worship in person or on live stream at 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. But we ask if you are planning to join us in the sanctuary that you register by Saturday morning. A confirmation of your registration will be sent to you via email. Did you miss something in these announcements? <laughs> That's okay. You can stay up to date by downloading the Shalom app, following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, subscribing to our YouTube channel, or by visiting our website at www.shalomccop.org. Ooh, have you heard about our Z Connection podcast? If not, you don't know what you're missing. Go ahead and follow Z Connection on any podcast streaming service. You will definitely enjoy it. Let's remember Shalom family. Even during these unprecedented times, we are still committed to Christ's work through preaching, teaching, and praying. Those are your announcements. Stay safe, remember to mask up, and have a blessed week. Hey, Gen Z. Do you feel the disconnect from God and your fellow Gen Z peers? We have just the event planned for you. Me and the Z Connection Committee present Vibing Out, Lock In, inspired by the hit TV show, Wildin' Out. It's a kickback. Get excited because you know I am. So ages 17 to 22, you all are invited. All you have to do is be a member of Shalom Church. We have a ton of fun activities planned, from a bonfire to a breakout discussion room with Bible games. The lock-in will take place on Friday, December 17th at our Lindbergh campus. Doors will open at 9 p.m. and they will lock at 10 p.m. Come with blankets, pillows, and sleeping bags to enjoy this wonderful night. Food, snacks, and drinks will be offered throughout the night, and breakfast will be provided in the morning. Just to give a little more information, that night you will receive a badge, your t-shirt, and a care package that will get you through our fun plan night. Also, registration fees are now free. So we would like to give a huge thank you to the Dream Woke team who have donated to cover all the fees for each participant. Thank you so much. Also, please remember on December the 15th, right here at the Lindbergh campus, we will have COVID testing for all participants. Be on the lookout for more information. Until then, Shalom.